Welcome back to the channel. I spent a lot of time in this shop getting Fox bodies to work right. So I thought I'd make a video outlining five of the most common mistakes that guys make when they're building these cars to help you get yours right the first time. These problems are in no particular order, but let me go over them one by one. One common mistake that guys make is they have the wrong spark plugs in the car. Now, what do I mean by wrong spark plugs? I don't just mean the wrong heat range or the wrong brand or something like that. What really happens is by now, piles of these cars have aftermarket aluminum cylinder heads. Those cylinder heads take a washer seat plug like this. You can see it's got a washer seat on it. The factory heads take a tapered seat plug like this. Now, if I put these two together and I hold them at the mount point, you can see there's a radical difference in the reach of these plugs. What's more, if you've installed the tapered seat plugs into aluminum heads, the taper can actually damage the first thread on the cylinder heads. And you have to be very careful if you've pulled a set like this out. In fact, <laughs> This particular set of tapered seat plugs I pulled out of a Fox body just yesterday, uh, which had completely wrong plugs. It ran like crap. Uh, and after I changed the plugs, not only did it run better, but it made uh, 20 wheel horsepower more. So if in doubt, check with your cylinder head manufacturer. The normal plugs that you'd use in most aluminum cylinder heads or something like NGK FR5 or Autolite 3924. The normal plugs you'd use in stock heads would be something like these NGK UR45s. Get the right plug, you'll save yourself a lot of grief. If you want a little more comprehensive discussion on spark plugs, there's a video on this channel called Everything You Need to Know About Spark Plugs for Your Fox Body Mustang. Another common mistake is that guys forget to hook up the fuel injector ground strap. It's a little wire on the back of the fuel injection harness at the back of the motor, and it's commonly left off after the motor has been pulled. I'm gonna try and show you the fuel injector ground strap on this 88 Mustang. So, you gotta get to the back of the motor. Here is your main injection harness setup. You got your salt and pepper shakers, and if you look real careful, see this wire here? It's an orange wire in this case, I think sometimes it's black. It usually has a braided sleeve over it, like this one does. That wire is supposed to hook up, it's supposed to be bolted to the driver's side cylinder head at the back. That's back in here, and it's supposed to bolt to the same place that this braided ground strap, which is a factory part, bolts up to. So this braided ground strap goes to the firewall, goes to the back of the driver's side cylinder head, and the fuel injector ground is supposed to go to there. Now, the fuel injector ground does not have to go to that particular place. And one of the reasons why it's left off is because that's a terrible spot to get into with your hand, especially afterwards, it's hard to even see. So you can bolt it up to the passenger head. The passenger head sits a little further back it's easier to get in there with a bolt. You can bolt it to a um, bell housing bolt. You can bolt it to pretty well anything on there, but it needs to be grounded. One of the most common mistakes that Fox body guys make is adding electrical load to the car without updating the alternator. So this little 88 Mustang has a stock alternator. It's got an electric fan, a big fuel pump, a big stereo, a mega squirt, and all of that translates into a low system voltage. It sits here and idles around 11.8 volts. That can cause all kinds of hard to put your finger on problems. My favorite solution for one of these is a Ford 3G. It's a fairly straightforward update. It puts a 130 amp alternator in and that's enough for what most guys are doing with a Fox body. Another common mistake and probably the number one reason why cars leave the dyno here without the tune-up being finished, is that the fuel pump is too small. Guys put all kinds of power upgrades on the car. They neglect the fuel system. They don't put in a big enough pump. Sometimes they don't put in big enough injectors. 
And when we get running the car hard under load, it runs out of fuel. So what about fuel pumps? I actually have videos on this channel showing you how to do the pump upgrades, how to upgrade the pump wiring. But the long and short of it is, you put a whole bunch of performance upgrades on the car, it's gonna make more power. In order to make more power, it burns more fuel. And that means you have to be able to deliver more fuel from the pump. So if you run a stock pump, which is something like 85 liters per hour, it's just not enough, even for a typical, you know, little heads cam intake car. You've got to, got to upgrade the fuel pump. Now a real tell when we run it on the dyno that the pump is not enough, is we put a fuel pressure gauge on the car, run it at wide open throttle, and if you see the fuel pressure begin to drop off under power, you know for sure you've reached the deliverability limit of the pump. And another really common mistake is that the cars are timed wrong. When it comes to timing these cars, you've got to time them with a timing light. Now, if your car is a factory type engine management system, you got this spout connector here. You're gonna pull that little plug out and then, I don't know if we can see down in here, you gotta get a timing light down on that timing pointer while the car's running and hooked up to number one and you need to get the car set. The normal setting for this is 10 degrees before top dead center. Now, if it's done with a performance chip, that's almost always the right setting. If you have no chip in the car, you bump it up between two and four degrees there, it'll help a little bit with your performance and that's part of the 10 minute tune up. So what are the mistakes guys make? They forget to pull the spout connector. If you do that, you end up setting the timing about 10 degrees too low. Um, another mistake that guys make is they time it after top dead center. So instead of 10 degrees before top dead center, they time it 10 degrees after top dead center. On most Ford balancers, both things are marked. And if you do that, you've timed it 20 degrees too low and your car's not gonna run right. Um, if you have an aftermarket engine management system like a Mega Squirt or a Terminator X, there'll be a separate timing procedure. On those systems, you don't touch the spout connector and instead you set a static timing on the aftermarket engine management system. Then you adjust the distributor with a timing light so that the actual timing matches the static timing which is set on one of those systems. Then you lock the distributor down and after that, whatever you tell it in the engine management system is gonna be the correct timing. I know I said we'd only do five things, but there's an almost infinite number of things can be wrong with these cars. Let me talk about one more, something I've had to deal with a couple times just in the last month. And that is your fuel injector connectors. You see this one, I took this off of a car just the other day. It has no tabs on it. <laughs> there are no tabs. That connector will not stay connected to the fuel injector. When it comes off, that cylinder will go dead. This is another example. This is super typical on Fox bodies got one tab, the other one's broke off. If your harness is like this, you can, make, you can make it work by when you click it on, use a zip tie to hold the other side down to keep it in place. But if you don't, you can risk having it twist and pop off. A lot of times these problems are fairly visible. Most of the fuel injectors are easy to see, but the number four injector on a Fox body is in a place that's hard to even see. And that's a place where I commonly run into these issues. So let me try and show you this number four fuel injector situation if I can. <laughs> like I said, it's a spot that's hard to see with your eyes, so I don't know what we're gonna do about getting the camera in here. But you get down in here, there's your fuel pressure regulator, there's your rail, there's your rail, fuel rail. And then down underneath there, you can sort of just see the fuel injector connector down in underneath there. So it's a spot, like I said, you can't hardly even see. And that's a spot where I've caught a bunch of these cars with the connector off. Sometimes it's off because the connector's damaged. 
Sometimes it's off because it's a terrible spot and during the assembly someone just missed it and then during their double checks because they couldn't see it, they just missed it. But if you've got a dead cylinder, <laughs> the car's not running right, you pull the number four plug and you can see that that cylinder's not running, you've got to somehow get your eye in there to see whether that connector is intact and in place. So that's just a few of the things that can be wrong with your Fox body. Look at your own car. If you're having trouble with it, it's not running right. Go through it and check for all of these things first. Chances are you have one of them. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.